Assalamualaikum dear students and welcome to the 52nd session of the Kids Distance Learning Program Current Affairs News of Piranal Session. I am your host Shah Rukh Heather and today we are going to discuss what is the matter of the provincial status of Gilgil Baltistan. So let's look, at, have a cursory look over the history of Gilgil Baltistan. So Gilgil Baltistan is basically part of the larger Kashmir Valley and its issue basically started after the Pakistan independence in 1947 and the emergence of the Kashmir ascension issue between India and Pakistan and subsequent war. I'm sure all of you are aware of it. And uh, during that you know, period, uh, since Maharaja Hari Singh sought to create an independent Kashmir, Pakistan did not want that. So Qaid Azam ordered the tribal Lashkars in the Pakhtun belt to basically invade Kashmir and wrest it away from the forces of Maharaja Hari Singh before the Indian forces come into play. And they were able to you know, conquer a significant part of Kashmir, one third roughly being the uh, you know, Azad uh, Kashmir Valley the Neelam Valley and of course the Gilgil Baltistan region <coughs> and then you know subsequently there was the India-Pakistan war after which the UN established the line of control and the Kashmir Valley was divided between the two countries along the line of control with Azad Kashmir and Gilgil Baltistan coming in Pakistan's favor and Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh coming in India's favor. So if we look at uh, the constitutional status of uh, Gilgit Baltistan, it has historically not been included in the constitutional structure of Pakistan and it has been designated as Northern Areas. Uh, Pakistan granted some semblance of um, an autonomous status to Gilgit Baltistan in 1970, but majorly Gilgit Baltistan was administered remotely by the Federation, by the central government uh, ever since then. Then, due to increasing pressure from the people of Gilgit Baltistan and popular demand for more autonomy and representation, in 2009, Pakistan passed the Gilgit Baltistan Empowerment and Self-Governance Order. After which, uh, you know, Gilgit Baltistan was accorded a significant amount of autonomy, but it was still limited. It was more or less like you know the Jammu and Kashmir under the Article 370 and 35A of the Indian Constitution, which now have obviously been uh, abrogated since August 5, 2019. That obviously includes a separate legislature and the constitution, just like Indian Kashmir did. So, Gilgit Baltistan had roughly the same kind of constitutional status and provisional status as the you know Kashmir uh, Indian occupied Kashmir did until. <coughs> the 5th of August 2019. <coughs> now the demand for a separate provincial status in Gilgit Baltistan of Pakistan has been long standing among the people of Gilgit Baltistan. They absolutely reject the assertion that they are part of Kashmir. They don't consider them to be part of Kashmir. They consider them to be part of Pakistan and want to be a permanent part of Pakistan. They reject any proposal of integration with the greater Kashmir region. And nearly every year you might have seen protests in big cities around Gilgit Baltistan, such as the Gilgit city, uh, to push the government to grant them more rights, constitutional protections, as granted to and awarded to other provinces of Pakistan. Now, Gilgit Baltistan holds very important strategic uh, location for Pakistan. On the north, it is connected to the Xinjiang province of China. In the west, it is connected to Afghanistan through the Wakhan corridor. On the east, it is connected to India and uh, the Greater Kashmir region through uh, Ladakh and Jammu. Uh, you know, so it borders important positions, and obviously for Pakistan, it is the primary route of the China-Pakistan economic corridor. And in the past, we have seen a matter of controversy over this issue when India and United States both contested the CPEC passes through internationally recognized disputed territory, which is why it is illegal, and tried to sabotage and undermine CPEC projects on multiple occasions. And USA completely owned up to that narrative, which is very bad for Pakistan's foreign policy and Pakistan's success of CPEC. Anyhow, we prospered against all odds. So why does, you know, the important question is, why does Pakistan not grant uh, Gilgit Baltistan a separate provincial status, despite the fact that the people of Gilgit Baltistan want it? Well, in internationally, Gilgit Baltistan is considered under international law as part of Kashmir, and therefore the internationally recognized dispute of Kashmir, uh, until it is resolved, the GGB cannot become part of Pakistan. Because if Pakistan forcibly does that, that would only weaken Pakistan's Kashmir stance and Kashmir cause, and might just cause Pakistan Kashmir, which, by the way, is something that ju just might happen anyway. 
So, <coughs> why now? Why does the BDI government want to grant a provisional provincial status to Jeeves? Well, there are primarily two reasons. First of all, India's belligerent attitude towards the Kashmir issue, its abrogation of Kashmir's uh, you know, autonomous status and its imposition of a strict lockdown and bringing Pakistan, India and Kashmir to a new normal have had to have some kind of reaction for Pakistan and change atmosphere towards uh, policy, Pakistan's Kashmir policy. And that is something I believe what Pakistan has envisioned that perhaps it is time to accept the status quo as the international boundary and integrate Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan permanently into Pakistan. Maybe that is something that Pakistan is considering at this point. If India keeps moving towards more and more draconian occupation of Kashmir to the extent that Kashmir, Jammu and Ladakh become permanently part of uh, India due to its continuous and brutal occupation. <coughs> And secondly, the PTI government basically wants to win the elections, the upcoming election of 13th November in Gilgit Baltistan, which is why it is basically giving this as a lollipop to the people of Kashmir that maybe this, this will make them happy and they will elect us. Because GB is important when it comes to elections, it's a, it contributes a significant number of MNAs to the federal government, and uh, it's an important part of uh, you know the electoral process of Pakistan, despite not being constitutionally part of the provincial structure of Pakistan. So that's where we stand at this point. Even if the PTI government grants provisional provincial status, that wouldn't be very different from the current administrative makeup. That would just be, you know, old wine and new bottle, so to speak. So I don't think much will change unless two of the following things happen. First, some kind of agreement between India and Pakistan over the future of Kashmir affects the status of Kashmir and, and some agreement and peace deal is reached or either India completely occupies and makes Kashmir, Jammu and Ladakh permanent parts of India forcibly. In those cases, GB might become part of Pakistan and future status might change and their sufferings of the GB people might be alleviated. Other than that, nothing much will change. Thank you very much for your attention. Allah.